Hey, buddy. It's time to go get loaded. come. I'm here in Duluth, Minnesota. I'm picking up some freight here that's going back to Manitoba for me. I think it's going to continue further than that, but I'm going to take it to our yard in southern Manitoba. From here I have uh, one more pickup yet in uh, Hibbing. I thought it was Hibbins. I think I called it Hibbins yesterday. I keep doing that every time I go there. Hibbing, Minnesota. I have one skid to pick up there on the way back that'll fill up the trailer. It's not a full load I'm picking up here, I don't believe. Or at least it's not a full trailer load. I don't know. We'll see what happens today. Thanks for joining me. If you're new, I've been making videos for about 13 years. Make sure you subscribe. Go to my playlists on my channel. Check them all out. Stick around. You don't want to miss it. First things first, we have to scale ourselves. So that they know exactly how heavy our unit is right now. Then they know how much they can put on us. Like I said though, it won't be a full load, so I'm not worried about being overweight. I think I'm picking up five skids from here, five or six, which they're loaded in the center of the trailer, and you'll see them. I think it's about 39,000 pounds that I'm picking up here. Usually I can pick up about 44 to 45,000 pounds and still be legal in the United States weight-wise. very hot humid and muggy in our region this past week or two like just the air is you gonna drink it oh man makes you sweat really quickly so they're loading up my buddy over here getting him loaded up he's got one two three on his trailer so far I'm not sure if that's it I think I'm getting five of those so what I said before five I think that's what the message said. And then from here, our second pickup is actually tied to this pickup. They're connected, so they knew about it too. Sometimes they don't know about your next pickup and you gotta make sure you leave enough space on your trailer so that you're, you got room for your next pickup, right? Um, because if a, if a full load doesn't take up an entire trailer, what I'll often do is I'll center it on the trailer then so my weight is evenly distributed between my truck and trailer with a little bit more of the weight on my truck if possible. You always want to carry the weight on the back of your truck. You don't want to pull the heavier weight on the trailer. Because if your trailer's heavier than your truck, or the back of the trailer is heavier than the front, every time you go over a bridge or a bump, you're going to get a, what we call a donkey kick. It's going to be a bit of a rougher ride. Harder on your truck, harder on your equipment, harder on your back, your neck, and just annoying. Harder on your brain and your mind. So you always want more weight on your drives, on your truck. So that's usually what I would do. I'd center it and then put just maybe like a, a thousand or two, two more pounds on my truck if possible. But if I know I got a second delivery or a second pickup, I'll always 
load everything as far to the front as possible to leave as much in the back open for the next pickup. But these guys uh, are connected to that one, so they knew about that already. So they will load me and make sure I have enough space for that. I have one big skid to pick up there. I think they said it was like 80 inches, 80 by 60. Does that sound right? I'm not sure. The point is, uh, they'll load me in such a way here that I won't have a problem loading that over there. And then they'll be expecting me. Uh, he's going, this other driver over here, he's going to that same place as well. So I'm not sure why they didn't just send one truck there, one truck here. They sent us both here and then they're sending us both there for like half here, half there. There must be a good reason for it. I just don't. I, I am just not privy to it. I have no idea. But here we are, living the dream, driving truck, having fun. Back onto the scale we go, except this time I'm, I'm going to weigh my axles one at a time. I put my steer axles on the scale, leave everything else off. So there. All right, here we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, just like they said there would be. We had to double stack these guys here. These are heavy. They're about uh, uh, 7,800 pounds each. And I'm picking up my next pickup that's going to go back here, and that's 6,600 pounds. So in order to leave room weight-wise on these axles for 6,600 pounds, we had to stack them up there. So now my truck is sitting at about 33,000 pounds, like on my drive, the two axles in the back of my truck. My steer axles are at about 11,600. I'm allowed 12,000. The two axles behind my truck, we call those drives. My drives are at 33,000 pounds. I'm allowed 34,000 pounds on those here in the US. Once I cross into Canada, I'm allowed 17,000 kilograms, which is about 37,500 pounds. But we're in the US, so we have to follow the US rules. Max, 34,000. We have 33. So I have 1,000 pounds for fuel available on those axles. Here we're sitting at about 26,000 pounds. So you get 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. We got 8,000 pounds available now. On this. So that should be plenty enough for that extra skid, I believe he said 60 by 80 inches. It's a bit of a bigger one. So we'll plop those down right over the axles. And then we'll take these all to Manitoba. These guys, I'm, I'm pretty sure the other one is going with them because it's part of the same order. And they're going to Logan Lake, British Columbia. But I'm taking it as far as Manitoba and another driver is going to take it the rest of the way. What are they, Trucker Josh? What are they? I have no idea. I have no idea. But they're heavy. That's what I'll tell you. They're heavy. That's what they are. Steel of some sort for something. I'm sure they have a very, very specific and important purpose. Right now their purpose is to get to Manitoba. That's what their purpose is. Let's see if we can get out of Duluth here. Looks like it's about an hour and a half up to Hibbing. Hibbing. I should have gone, but I'm way too nice. I'm gonna wait for that pickup truck. I think most other people would have gone. You're welcome. Nice truck. so hot and humid the last couple of weeks like I was saying earlier we'll get that humidity out of the air a good rainfall and then hopefully it'll dry up after that and then we can I guess we're gonna start moving into fall soon right or autumn as the elite high-class people would say autumn yes around here we call it fall because leaves fall down Found 
ourselves on a little detour because there was construction on the main road. Turn left on There was no signs leading up to a road closure. I see that there is signs here and for eastbound going the other way, but westbound they had no signs leading up. You just came around the corner and suddenly, boom, the road was closed. 200 meters, turn left on, Warwickshire Road. Now we're gonna keep going straight. Yeah, no warning, the road was closed and uh, there was no signs telling us which direction to go. I see that there's signs here now labeling the detour. But somebody must have stolen the signs last night or they fell over or something. There was nothing. Well, that's okay. I mean, I figured it out. Here we are. I'm not complaining or nothing. I was just kind of shocked. I came around the corner and, oh, look at that. The road is closed and I don't know what way to go. So I had to pull over and check Google Maps. Found a different road and that turned out to be the official detour. County Road 98. Ah, no problem solving when you're on the road, right? Making it happen. Okay. So I got my one last piece added on here. Right over the axles, it's perfect. It's also some sort of steel, but it's got a rubber coating on it. Going to the same place, I guess. Let's quickly tire down and we'll head on back. The closest border crossing from here would be uh, War Road, Minnesota into Sprague, Manitoba. Oh no, I've only, oh boy, I've got a, I only got one more short strap. Shoot, I have to use one more. Uh, but uh, Sprague, from what I, I called in and asked, apparently I can't cross through there with commercial freight. I can go through empty. Same thing as uh, Tolstoy, Manitoba and Lancaster, Minnesota. I thought it was a commercial, but I guess not. So we can't cross through there. That would have been the closest crossing. So we got to go all the way over to, uh, oh, come on. Come on. Got to go all the way over to, uh, Pembina, North Dakota, and Emerson, Manitoba. That's where we'll be crossing into Canada. I don't have any other short ones. These are all long ones. Shoot. Used up all my short ones on the rest of this stuff. Short ones come in handy. And you don't have all that excess strap to roll up, but it's not that big of a deal. Okay. Oh, and we're gonna need a portable as well it's for some reason this one doesn't have a winch on this side huh that's disappointing okay so what I'm probably gonna do hmm probably have to, I could go like yeah see this one's here I could go across here to there and then from that there to over there then I can use the winches. That might be my best bet. Well, let's go take a look at what winches we have on the other side. Got one winch in the center here. So, for one. But one over here to this, and the other one's gonna have to. Actually, yeah, that would that would still work. What we can do then is here. I'll throw this over. I think it'll still work. Let's see. Let's see what it'll look like. If I put this into here, the other strap's gonna come through over there into here. I only need two on this. So let's see this gonna look like if I do this like, is that gonna be enough to hold that down I don't like that nah so I want it to come over here 
Okay, so I'm gonna have to get a portable. Hmm. No, this might actually still work. I mean, it will hold it down. And then this one obviously goes through and across here, right? No vehicles coming. Tie that one in there. Okay. That one's easy. Okay, see, so this comes through here. Hmm, I wonder if I were to... See, I want that on that side of that. No, that's, that doesn't make sense either. Well, let's get this one in, because this one makes sense. Yeah, you know what? I think this will work just fine. Because we got this strap here, that's holding this down. This strap here goes over that piece of wood, which holds this side down, right? I mean... Huh. It's probably the best... How about if we come through here? Would this thing... No, no, it doesn't, doesn't slide that far. Okay, well, that's my best option, I guess. Yeah. And that holds it down well. Yeah. I'm going with that. This actually works better this way, because this way you have a strap coming over the front like this, preventing it from sliding forward if you have to slam on the brakes for a deer or crazy drivers. And this one back here, it's holding this side straight down. That'll be good. Just tighten her down. That's what it looks like on this side. Yeah, I am I'm happy with that. See, there's rubber. You see how it dents in a little bit? It's because it's rubber. The first time I hauled these, I thought I was actually crushing the steel. I was about to go flex in a mirror and uh, tell everybody how strong I am. In fact, this is just rubber. It's, see, this whole top piece is rubber and it's mounted onto this part, which is steel. But this is rubber. Tight. And of course, while I'm here, I'm gonna go check all these straps as well. Just make sure that everything is tight. Hum, and that means it's tight. Let's tighten that one a little bit. Looking good. We are set. Ready to rock and roll. Let's take this home.
I've got my next marching orders lined up already. So as soon as we get this delivered to the yard, I'll take my equipment off of it. I'll grab another trailer, see if I can find another step deck like this one. And we're heading back to Kenora. Grab another one, head down to Brainerd tomorrow.
wouldn't be able to make it. <laughs> but uh, well, we did pretty good. We did pretty good. The fuel light's on, but still got an eighth of a tank. We're still doing good. I could probably still go another hour, hour and a half, maybe three hours yet. Who knows? I've never pushed it. I don't really want to find out. <laughs> I don't want to find out where that limit is. If it was winter time, I would never even push it this far. Never. But it's summertime and it's 20 degrees out, 70 Fahrenheit or something. Cutting it just a little close today. 196 gallons or 741 liters is what we filled up for. Here's a big one. 600 meters, slide right on, Born Selkirk Highway, Highway 29 and then, keep to the left at 1.4 kilometers. Coming up to the Canadian border, across here, we just passed Pembina, North Dakota, we're going to cross into Canada and be in Emerson, Manitoba. And then it's just an hour and 15 minutes up to our yard, i got to take my equipment off this trailer, drop the trailer, hook onto a different trailer and hook it towards Kenora. Got to pick up in Kenora tomorrow morning, drop it off in Brainerd tomorrow afternoon, and then be in Bristol, Indiana for Thursday afternoon, and then book it back home for the weekend. I know it's a bit of a long deadhead for that reload, but it's the way it is on this one. In one kilometer, keep to the left on, Lord Selkirk Highway, Highway 75. See you guys on the other side. Shoot to the left on Lord Selkirk Highway, Highway 75. Back in Manitobers. There's some good news. The scale is closed. Continue on this road for 15 kilometers. That is fantastic. Let's quickly sneak past here before they change their mind. got a new trailer again empty we're here in Kenora Ontario ready to load in the morning got this riser up here I'm gonna need that for my load after this load Got my tarps up there and I'm ready to go to sleep wake up early and get a good start to the day it smells like skunk I don't think I hit one I didn't notice if I did. Skunk around here somewhere. So yeah, the, the plan is, first thing, as early as I can. The gate opens at 7 a.m. Plan to be in there right at like 6.59. Get loaded, get tarped, or get it tied down, get tarped. Get that freight over to Brainerd, Minnesota, which is six hours down the road from here. Get it unloaded tomorrow afternoon and then start booking it down towards Indiana, where my final load for the week is. It's, it's a bit of a hike. It's almost a full day drive. It's, I don't like that many empty miles, but uh, you know, when that's all there is, and it's, it's decent. I mean, if it uh, wasn't profitable, we wouldn't be doing it, right? So we gotta go on a little bit of a hike to go pick up this load, but hopefully it'll be worth it in the end, right? pick that up uh, they want to load me Friday morning but I'm gonna try to get there Thursday so that they can load me on Thursday if possible that would be great uh, if not then we'll load up Friday first thing in the morning and then book it home I'll be back home Saturday hopefully around lunch cutting it really close because at supper time at 6 30 we have family pictures that we've organized that we paid a photographer like my, my mom and dad 
paid a photographer and it's kind of a big thing. So I better not miss it. So we're gonna be go, 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 go. That's why I'm trying to get loaded on Thursday. Oh, and that's it for the day. This turned out to be a pretty long vlog, I think. So if you made it all the way to the end, you are amazing. Thank you very much. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We make new videos every day. I'm on video 3100 and I don't even know. Look down below, you can see for yourself what number we're on. You can go to my playlists on my main page, find them all in order there. There's one big playlist with all of them from start to finish, and there's also playlists separated into years that they were filmed, all the way back to 2014. You can go to other playlists and find videos that were filmed before that, even all the way back to 2011. So subscribe, 